So one of the questions was also about MRI. Um, some people have compression on the opposite side as well. So they have hemifacial spasm, let us say, on the right side, but their MRI also shows a compression on the left side. So yeah. what should they do about it? This is a very common question asked. People, because nowadays people read the report. And unfortunately, with due respect to radiologists, barring one or two radiologists who make it a point to report a neurovascular conflict and then you know watch the video of surgery there are such radiologists apart from them people who just report it you know like a routine case i really don't trust their reports first of all but sometimes there is vessel seen on both the sides if the person has spasm on left side mri also shows a neurovascular conflict on the right side their question is how come we have spasms only on the left side now the reason for that I have explained in detail in one of the videos and perhaps you can give link of that video uh, so that people can watch but in short you know it takes two things for the spasms to happen that the blood vessel has to be there in a critical position that it has to have stiff curve causing pulsatile compression and the second and the second point is very important and that particular nerve has to be sensitive uh, by birth, it should be congenitally, it should be sensitive in that area. The junctional zone or OR zone that we call, it is not well formed in these patients and that's why the nerve uh, entry zone, uh, root entry zone, root exit zone, you can call it anything, is inherently sensitive and on the top of that there is blood vessel, then spasms will happen. Perhaps on the opposite side, the nerve entry point is not sensitive, it is formed properly during childhood or uh, in mother's womb while the nerve is being formed, uh, there is no defect, it is not sensitive but the blood vessel is there. But blood vessel in itself, by itself cannot cause spasms, the nerve also has to be sensitive. So MRI has got a very limited meaning. There is a corollary to this question wherein people say what if someone has spasm and there is no blood vessel demonstrated. Again, I have made a video on this, but in short, the answer is like this. If there is no blood vessel seen on the MRI, then who has reported the MRI? Has a radio, routine radiologist who has no interest in neurovascular conflict reporting reported this? Has a neurosurgeon who is, you know, literally daily working in this area, has he seen and said that there is no blood vessel? Because many a times there will be blood vessels which are not reported. But if the blood vessel is really absent, then what we do is that we repeat the MRI with angiography and 3D reconstructions and still if we don't see the vessel, then we have to again go in neurological history of the patient. You know, uh, in all the patients we ask this history, whether he or she has had a history of multiple sclerosis or has a history of Bell's palsy from which he's you know improving he or she is improving mm -hmm. or has uh, had any other uh, you know degenerative di disorder um, you know or demyelinating disorder in the past of the nervous system so if we get such a history then we really you know uh, then reconsider the diagnosis mm -hmm. of cause of uh, uh, of the hemifacial spasm mm -hmm. but if there is really absent blood vessel you have to again go and ask the question sometimes people forget they have had an attack of Bell's palsy some years back, you know, and uh, then when you, you know, again try to ask questions, you get that history. In last 20 years, there has been one instance only, by God's grace, only one instance, wherein I was shocked not to find a blood vessel when we exposed, mm -hmm. actually. And then we realized that the patient has uh, had neurological disorder a few years back, which is called as multiple sclerosis. And she completely forgot to give that history in spite of asking uh, very specifically. Uh, there was a blood vessel seen on the MRI, but upon exposure, that blood vessel was not seriously compressing. So the point is that MRI is only an indicator. You have to actually consider the MRI, the patient's symptoms and the patient's history together and then come to conclusion. So 
but it's it's a complex subject and uh, people who are interested can refer to those detailed videos